Hi, I'm Pete Forsyth. I'm the founder and principal of Wiki Strategies, a firm that guides our clients in understanding and making changes to Wikipedia in ways that are ethical and effective. I'm also the editor-in-chief of the Wikipedia Signpost and uh, the instructor of writing Wikipedia articles, which is a free online course. So in all those roles, I try to help people understand how Wikipedia works and expand their uh, you know, help help people expand their thinking about it. So a few days ago, I made a tweet and a Facebook post that captured a fair amount of interest. So I thought I'd delve into it in a little more depth. Here's the tweet. Uh, so what we basically have here is a Wikipedia article, the Wikipedia article about the protests to the Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota in the USA. Uh, have been those have been ongoing since April 2016 as I'm recording this video it's the end of November 2016 and the time period reflected in this graphic is basically the month of November more or less uh, so and it's and what we're looking at is the readership statistics of that article this is a very straightforward graph zero is at the bottom and it's not logarithmic or anything like that so you're basically seeing a tenfold increase from the low 2000s to the low 20,000s uh, almost overnight. So what could cause something like that? In this case, I think it's fairly clear. The big story about the pipeline protests at that time was that the sheriff department started using water cannons in sub-freezing conditions on the protesters. On uh, They were saying that it was primarily to put out fires, but there was also a fair amount of video showing that they were using it directly on protesters. And that captured a great deal of interest in the mainstream media. This photo is from Newsmax, uh, you know, the New York Times, PBS, CNN, all kinds of mainstream outlets were covering this. And also it was uh, attracting a great deal of attention just on social media with people resharing photos and videos like this. So it stands to reason that that might have driven this kind of interest. Let's take a quick look at the article itself. Uh, it's a pretty huge but also well-organized article. I'm just going to scroll through it very quickly. You're, of course, welcome to delve into it yourself. Uh, but I do want to come down. does have over, I think, 120 references. And there's been a great deal of deliberation about what are the best references to use. Wikipedia's volunteer editors take this stuff pretty seriously and uh, really delve into what is reliable, what is authoritative, what, how can we summarize the information from what sources uh, in a way that complies with Wikipedia's standards of neutrality and verifiability. So what you may not know is that on any Wikipedia article, in for anything I'm going to show you here, uh, I happen to be logged into my account, but you don't have to be. Um, on any Wikipedia article, there's a View History tab. If you click that, the main purpose of this page is to show you the revision history of every edit ever made to that article. I'm not going to get into that here. I do have another video that goes into that in some detail if you're curious. Uh, but what I do want to show you is if you come to this page, there's this little link up near the top called Page View Statistics. When you click that, it takes you to this really cool tool. This is what I used to generate that graphic. And this is also, like the Wikipedia article, is something that was basically developed by a volunteer. If you go down to the bottom, it'll tell you, brought to you by Music Animal, who I believe is the primary developer. And Caldari and Marcelo Luis Forns, I, I believe, are both staff of the Wikimedia Foundation who helped to some degree. But, um, but mainly, I, I believe this was built by a volunteer, uh, as are many tools that are hosted here on the tools.wmflabs.org site. Uh, the Wikimedia Foundation is a nonprofit and it does provide the raw data that's behind a user-friendly tool like this. That in itself is very unusual and important. Uh, most media companies are very, uh, very reluctant to share detailed information and comprehensive information like this about who's reading what. That's very, they might consider that very proprietary because that helps them figure out what they want to cover and how. Uh, but Wikipedia is not for profit and it's very values driven. Uh, it's very much driven by the idea that information should be 
broadly available. Uh, of course, some levels of this kind of information would really get into the privacy of, of readers if you were giving very specific information about who is reading what where. Uh, so Wikipedians are also pretty diligent about trying to protect that kind of information. Uh, but the fact that this is available is pretty unique to Wikipedia. It's not entirely unique. I'm going to explore that a little bit in a minute. Uh, but I would say that's one of the really important aspects of, of, of what Wikipedia is, is just how much information you can get beyond the articles themselves. So um, there's lots of options to play around with here. You can choose a custom date range. You can, you know, if you want to look at just uh, mobile platforms or desktop platforms, all kinds of things to, um, to change around if you like. But one thing I'd like to point out is if you, you can actually look at multiple articles compared to each other at the same time. So I just pasted in protests against Donald Trump. You'll see it kind of auto fills. Uh, so you can click on that. And as soon as you have a, a second article, now we've got two lines. We've got a, it, it goes from bar chart to line chart. So here's our original line. The blue line here is what we were looking at. And now there's a green line that shows the readership of the protests against Donald Trump. Those started on election day. So this chart starts at about election day and you can see it spiked up and then it very gradually tailed off. There was no big event like there was with the water cannons. So it's natural that it would just kind of uh, gradually reduce in readership. But there is uh, something interesting I want to point out down here. The overall views of the pipeline protest is 187,000. The overall views of the Donald Trump protest in this time period is 106,000, much less. But the edits to each one, the, uh, the, the Donald Trump protests got almost 1,800 edits in that period of time and only about 160 for the Dakota Access Pipeline protests. So we're sort of opposite, right? The one that's getting read more is getting edited less. Uh, and also the size of the article, even though we saw that was a huge article at, a, at about 90 kilobytes, the one that we looked at, the Donald Trump protest article is even huger. It's, uh, it's more than twice as long at 209 kilobytes. So maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe people are less inclined to read an article when it's enormous. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to speculate too much on that. Just thought that was some interesting information to share. <clears throat> um, now, I said before it's pretty unusual for an individual media company to share information. That's true. But there is one tool that you may be familiar with called Google, Google Trends. So if you go to google.com slash trends, you can enter in any search term. So here's the same one, Dakota Access Pipeline Protest. And what's interesting here is you do see the same spike after this is November 20th. This is the day the water cannons were used. So you do see a similar spike there. But before that, you see that interest was much more varied and, and higher than we saw in the Wikipedia article. So what's going on there? Um, <clears throat> I would say that is probably a reflection on the, the, the depth of information that the public is hungry for. So if you go back to, let's, let's go back to a presentation from a social media researcher named Ed Chi at the Wikisim 2011 conference. So here's a blog post I wrote that, that covers this. <clears throat> and if you go down, this is where I cover it. And here, let's just zoom in on the relevant slide. What Ed Chi was, oh, let's see. What Ed Chi was talking about here is a concept called scaffolding from educational psychology. So the idea is that when people are learning about a topic, they need to build a scaffolding, sort of a structure to support their growing understanding of that. In this study, the, uh, the rows, each row is an individual person. So he conducted the study uh, with about 15 or 18 users. And this is over time, going left to right. The yellow squares reflect Wikipedia, and the other colors reflect other kinds of resources. So, the, so each person was assigned a task to research, and this is a reflection of what they were looking at as time went forward. So the clear operation, uh, observation that he drew, especially if you kind of blur your eyes a little bit or draw back, is that Wikipedia is used very heavily early in the process. It's something that people use when they've, when they've chosen to really research a topic 
they tend to go to Wikipedia to develop their early understanding and then get into more detailed, more specific, maybe more authoritative sources. And really that's the purpose of an encyclopedia is to be sort of a, a guiding tool in helping you find access to information rather than containing all of the information. But all of this is at a kind of a more sophisticated level, I think, than people are usually at when they just enter a search term into Google. If they're just entering a search term, they just might want the most very basic information. What is it? Where is it? Oh, okay, it's that thing. It's not that other thing. Uh, you know, no dapple is different from the Donald Trump protests. Really basic information. Uh, they're probably not, uh, well, they, 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 they might or might not be really delving in and reading an article. So I think that's why you see the discrepancy between the Google Trends results, which were uh, there was no sharp increase or sharp or sustained increase versus the Wikipedia results that did show a very sharp and sustained increase. Uh, along these lines, there is one other resource you might be interested in. I actually don't know as much about this one, but Common Crawl is a nonprofit uh, a former colleague of mine went on to work for. Uh, I don't know a ton about it, but I, I believe their main work goes into generating the, uh, the raw data uh, more than user-friendly tools, but they're, they're building a, a database of web traffic, uh, which is along the lines of what Google offers more than what Wikipedia offers because it's about what people are generally visiting on the web uh, as opposed to specific sites. So if you're interested in this, you'll probably want to explore Common Crawl a little bit more. Uh, one final note before I sign off. Uh, for those of you in Oregon or in the Portland area, uh, I expect I will be on xray.fm tomorrow morning, somewhere between 7 and 9 a.m. Uh, that is Tuesday, November 30th. Uh, so give a listen if you're able to. Uh, and also, if you're from Oregon, you may be interested to know that Wikipedia and Wiki, Wiki Software, have a really uh, extensive history uh, uh, among Oregonians. So Ward Cunningham, who invented Wiki software back in the 90s, is from the Portland area, and so is uh, Larry Sanger, one of the co-founders of Wikipedia. He's not uh, originally from Oregon, but he graduated from Reed College in Portland, which is also my alma mater. Uh, and uh, there's a number of other folks as well. So here, this is just a letter that I wrote recently to the Portland Tribune that, that details some of that stuff. Anyhow, Thanks very much for watching. If this has prompted questions or ideas or further thoughts, I would love to hear from you. So uh, the easiest way to get in touch, is you can either just make a comment on this video or you can go to uh, our website at wikistrategies.net and click on contact us. And you can find my Twitter feed, you can leave a message uh, through our email form, etc. Thanks very much for watching.